Hello, Lobo fans. Welcome into your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm your host, Robert Portnoy, with head football coach at UNM, Danny Gonzalez. Coach G, it's great to be back with you. And uh, the Lobos had a rivalry game, 112th edition of the Rio Grande rivalry. Really tight early on. Uh, it ended up being a defensive struggle. New Mexico State just made more plays. They did. you, you got to give them credit. They, I thought they outplayed us. I mean, they were up for it. It was an electric environment. It's what the rivalry should be. I mean, it was great up here last year in our crowd. It was great down there in their crowd. People were into it. The student sections were right next to each other, which made for an even more wild environment. So uh, give them credit. Wind was a factor in this game, in particular in the second half. Third quarter, uh, probably my mistake. I thought we would uh, take the wind in the fourth quarter. Uh, probably gave them momentum with their two touchdowns in the third quarter. That was probably the difference. The defense played well, but I know that you focus on a couple of plays here and there where if they had done something differently, the outcome could have been different. Well, we shouldn't have given up the two big pass plays. I mean, that's going to kill you in any game. You can't give up big touchdowns. And then the late hit out of bounds, I mean, we've got to be smarter than that. We've got to make better choices and better decisions when we're chasing a guy out of bounds and he's out of bounds. That extended the drive and allowed them to score um, to make it 21-6. to six. We've got to be able to, when we get off the field, to be able to get off the field and get our offense a chance to move the ball. One of the storylines going into this edition of the Rio Grande rivalry was the change at offensive coordinator for the Lobos. Your quarterback's coach, Heath Ridenauer, was calling the plays for the first time. The Lobos came up with three field goals, didn't get into the end zone. What did you think of the offensive performance? A lot early. I mean, we did some good things. We stalled right before the first drive, but Luke came in, did a nice job on the field goals. We were three for three on that, so that was an improvement from where we've been. Uh, there were some hiccups along the way with some pre procedural things, but... I mean, we should get better. I mean, you should have a lot of improvement between game one and game two, just like in the beginning of a season. So I expect them to be better this week offensively and the whole procedural thing, everything. Procedural things. You did lose your center near the end of the second quarter. That caused some problems, didn't it? It did. I mean, give New Mexico State credit, too. They were making some stems and move calls up front. That kind of screwed us up, too. Uh, but we've got to be able to handle those. It doesn't matter. It's next man up mentality. And when CJ went down, Isaac's got a role in there, and we should be able to change that seamlessly. Coach mentioned one of the bright spots. Luke Drizwicki appears to have taken over the place kicking three for three on field goals. Another bright spot, a true freshman tailback, had a terrific game. Christian Washington looks like he has a really bright future. You know, he's hard to tackle, and they have a hard time – Seeing him because he's not very big. I mean, he's not very tall, but he's 200 pounds, and he is fast. He's fast and strong, and he showed a couple of uh, opportunities when he got to catch the ball out of the backfield. I mean, he can do some really special things when he has the football in his hands. What about quarterback play? There didn't seem to be as much rotation of the quarterbacks this week as there was last. Um, probably a combination of the way the game was going and then having a new play caller and getting some of those things done. Uh, we didn't get Justin in there but three times, and we can build on that. There's other things we can do, but... That was, the, that was the model of the game on Saturday night. One of the impressive drives that the Lobo offense did put together chewed up almost 10 minutes of the clock. It overlapped the third and fourth quarters. Impressive ground game, but you need to get a touchdown at the end of it. Yeah, we need to put that in the end zone. We had a chance on the third down play. We had a screen set up, and we had one guy miss a block, or Christian's going to be able to run down there and walk into the end zone. Those are the little things that we're missing right now. And when you take a 10-minute drive when you're down 21-6, you've got to result that with a touchdown or else you're just killing yourself. And in a game like this that's so tight, you can't give them an extra try on third down to convert, which you did with a late hit out of bounds. Cannot. I mean, that, those are the, the critical plays that a game comes down to. There's five or six of them usually, and that was one of them. And then not putting the ball in the end zone on the third down, that was another. Okay, we'll take our first time out. When we come back on the other side, we look at first half highlights, the Lobos and the Aggies from Aggie Memorial Las Cruces. We're back on your Lobo Coaches Show with head football coach at New Mexico, Danny Gonzalez. It's time to get into first half highlights, the Lobos and the Aggies at Aggie Memorial, 112th Rio Grande rivalry. It was a good job early getting the ball out of the quarterback's hand quick and getting it to Luke. Uh, we had some positive plays on his very first drive. We got behind the chains a couple times and we're able to get out of it. Here's one of uh, Christian's nine catches on the night. He's explosive, and he's hard to tackle for those guys. You mentioned it. He's, he's got a big body on a smaller frame, and I think he's deceptively strong. You can see it. He is, and he's got good vision in the hole. He hits the hole where it's supposed to be. Uh, the first guy hardly ever brings him down. There was a copy play right there where we got a quick tempoed, and Miles pulled the ball, got positive yard for a first down. Uh, this was a nice play by them. If we block down, uh, off of the edge right there. We've got a big time play coming, but one assignment mistake and it blows it up in our backfield. Nice hit by Luke and with a little bit of distance on it too. Yeah, two of his place kicks, two of his field goals were over 40 yards. 
Uh, he goes three for three. That's big moving forward. It was. It was. I mean, it gives you a lot of confidence, and, and kickers mostly are confident guys. There was Justin Harris with a nice pass breakup right there, getting his hands up on the pass rush. Uh, we we got some pressure on uh, Gavin Franks early and then made some good plays in the secondary. We never got him down, though, which was disappointing. We didn't take the ball away, and we didn't get any sacks. Were you surprised that they didn't use their other quarterback at all? I mean, we thought we'd see Pavia, but we didn't. Well, as long as the game was close, uh, I figured whoever started would be the one to stay. And that was kind of what the, the mode was. They, weren't, they were doing enough not to make mistakes to lose the game. There was a holding penalty right there on Ronald Wilson, but we've got an uncovered guy, an assignment error. I mean, that's good effort right there by Justin Harris, but an assignment error, we've got to eliminate all those. So that holding penalty negated a portion of that big play, but then they get a big run here from a big back. And that was a big time run, and we should have had that tackle for a two or three yard gain. We got When you got true freshmen in there, sometimes they do some out of character things, and. Uh, there was a nice job right there by them creating some smoke with the motion, got some dirty eyes and enabled them to score a touchdown. It was a nice throw on the outside shoulder by Gavin Franks right there. So the Thomas run sets up the touchdown pass to Watkins. Here's a, a really nice play for Wysong, a little fly sweep, but you, you showed him some counter look there. We did. We gave some misdirection right there. It was a really good job. We got the kick out blocked. We did a nice job. We tried to hit him with the little bubble and go right there. The release out to Christian Washington. We were a little bit short of the first down, but we tried to go ahead and continue on. Now here's another procedural error. When we, we can't do that. We were third and two. We were in two down territory. Instead, we end up in third and seven, and, and I thought Miles was a little bit too far away to go for it on fourth down, so we kicked another field goal. I'm, I'm guessing that the decision to not go for it there on fourth was a tough one, just because you're wondering, you know, is this going to be a tighter game? How many chances are we going to get to score? Yeah, you know, we had moved the ball down there. Both have gotten to the red zone twice early on in the game. I figured we'd be able to continue to move the ball, and, and that was why we decided to kick the field goal. Really nice job right there by Cody Moon getting pressure. Ian Shule took away the running back throw, and we were able to get off the field. Weissong looked really explosive early in this game. We you know we did some good stuff misdirection-wise to get the ball in his hands out on the perimeter. The guys did a pretty good job blocking. All right there, Andrew gets vertical right there. He'll get a few more yards, but those are, those are all things that are coming with some of the stuff that he's doing. I didn't agree with that call, but they called it anyway. Ineligible downfield there. Um, what about the inside running for Nate Jones in this one? I thought the inside running was, was okay. I mean, we got to continue to press that now. Sometimes we got to do a better job of counting the numbers and see when the evidence not numbered. Uh, big opportunity right there that we did not cash in on. Jarek Reed had an opportunity with the ball in his hands. I think Rico had an opportunity, but they were able to come up with it, and that was a big time play in the game. Rico Hanna just blows up a third and short play right there. That was a, that was a big one right there. Third and one, we got off the field. Here's another procedural error. Uh, I mean, we ended up having nine of those on the night. We had nine penalties for 64 yards. When you have nine, usually you have well over 100 yards. They were small penalties, but they got us behind the chains and put us in third down situations that we weren't able to, to convert. One of the occasions here where you had uh, Justin Holiday in at quarterback. You know, I would have liked to seen him put his foot in the ground and get vertical on that. Uh, there was one, the, the wheel dropped off into coverage. Miles didn't see him pre-snap, and they, they made a nice job. They did a nice job disguising and did a nice job making the play. And usually, you're a team that wins the turnover battle. I mean, takeaways, the Lobos are hanging their hat on takeaways this year. You know, we're tied for sixth in the country in takeaways, and we did not do any on, get any on Saturday, which was a big difference in the game, especially when the offense might not be scoring points. You can give them short fields and give them an opportunity to get in the end zone. So you go into halftime. New Mexico State has the 7-6 to six lead. It's pretty much even, Steven, in terms of the total yardage. What were your thoughts at halftime and what did you say to the team? I mean, it was exactly the kind of game that I told them all week it was going to be. I thought New Mexico State was playing with a lot of energy and I thought they were feeding off of the environment and the crowd. Uh, I thought the, excited, the second half was going to be exciting. We were ready to go, go upstairs, make some adjustments and then come back out and fight in the second half. What were some of the adjustments you talked about at halftime? You know, we had some double move opportunities on offense uh, when CJ went down. It kind of hurt some of our protection stuff. We had two guys in there. I mean, we had to slide Zach in there. So we had Zach and Isaiah at the guards and we had uh, Isaac at center. Uh, that's different than what we normally practice. And when you've got five guys that are new and you make that kind of adjustment, I mean, obviously there were some procedural errors that came along with it, some communication errors. So we've got to be able to fix those and adjust those. Now we did not know CJ was going to be out at halftime. So 
we went with what we were making adjustments and then had to do some of that stuff on the sideline. And one of the things that Lobo fans noticed early on is that Jordan Porter wasn't out there, and you told us afterward it was a heel. You know, he hurt his heel against the UNLV at the end. Um, did not play the last week, obviously. We thought on Thursday that he'd have a chance to go. On Saturday, he had no acceleration off that foot, so we decided to keep him out. Okay. Lobo's down one at halftime. We come back with second half highlights right after this. Welcome back on your Lobo Coaches Show with head football coach at New Mexico, Danny Gonzalez. It's time for second half highlights, the Lobos and the Aggies from Las Cruces. You know, we took the wind uh, for the fourth quarter, and I thought it played a bigger factor than I thought in the third quarter. This was a short kickoff. We didn't get off a block. They got excellent field position, and it kind of started what the field position battle would be for this quarter. Seemed like they did have a ton of short fields, and, and they were able to capitalize on it. You know, we, we got off the field on the three and out, and then they got us off on a three and out where we were backed up. This was a nice job. I mean, obviously the wind affected Aaron's punt. And then the nine yard return on the punt return gave them the ball for 30 yard line. Uh, here it is. I mean, this was a big play in the game. You can't give up big pass plays if you want to play defense that doesn't allow them to score. And AJ got out leveraged inside and then Gavin put the ball right in, where, right in the right spot for the receiver. When you look at the margin in this game, right, each team had three scoring possessions. They had three touchdowns. The Lobos had three field goals. Statistically, uh, the Lobos actually won the battle. But here's the key penalty we talked about in our open. Oh, for sure. I mean, we can't, we can't hit them when they're that far out of bounds. And there's a difference between playing on the edge and making costly mistakes. And that was a costly one because they were able to put the ball in the end zone. That made it a two possession ball game as opposed to being 14 to six. Now it was 21 to six. And then if we can get in the end zone, you're having the conversation of when we're gonna go for two. This speaks to what you were talking about earlier, Coach, uh, and the way that Frakes was able to avoid pressure when you did get it. You've been able to get guys on the ground this season, but not in this game. You know, depth kind of showed up right there. Um, obviously that was J.D. Roberts playing a little bit. Uh, changed the direction right there. Gavin got outside of him, and he was able to make, make a big play down to the three yard line, and then they were able to punch it in. Uh, I thought that New Mexico State did a great job on special teams. I mean, they, uh, they outplayed us on special teams. The kickoff coverage for them uh, really changed the dynamics of field position for the game. So the Lobos are backed up again, and Miles Kendrick does a nice job scrambling here. Got twisted up a little bit on that tackle. You know, Miles did a good job all night long trying to extend drives with his feet. Uh, we got to get the ball out of his hands. We have some opportunities. There was a nice throw right there, the Connor Widoff. We were able to get the ball and, and move it. We just didn't finish and get in the end zone. We were settling for field goals. And in a, bat, in a close battle like that, you've got to put it over the line. Another good, hard, tough run by Christian Washington. Uh, this one, Miles pulls it and keeps it and tries to turn the corner. You know, we missed a perimeter block and, and they were, or they defeated a block and were able to get Miles on the ground. He just had a terrific day coming out of the backfield. You mentioned it caught nine passes. Uh, this set you guys up with a chance to go for it on fourth and two. Christian Washington on that reception, and then you guys convert. We did. We got into a power formation right there under center, and I thought both the line and the running backs did a nice job of kicking that out. We were able to convert that twice, which gave us an opportunity to keep the drives going. So this particular drive, it's just a monster. It, it, ultimately, it'll chew up 10 minutes of clock. Um, the run game was terrific throughout. 10 minutes, 20 plays, and that was the biggest play right there. We miss a block out there on the edge on the screen. There's nobody left for Christian if, he get, if we get the guy kicked out and he's gonna walk into the end zone and all of a sudden it's a completely different scenario. Uh, but we settled for the field goal. Maybe should have went for the fourth down anyway on a fourth and six with 14 minutes or with the under eight minutes to go with the amount of time it took us to on that drive. But I thought we could play good defense, get the ball back to the offense and hopefully get it in the end zone right away. Good punt coverage here, and Luke, he's aggressive. He's gonna try and take off if he can, but they were on it. There's another procedural error. I mean, a little bit of that's the communication with the sideline. We've gotta eliminate those, because those, I mean, they put us behind the chains, and we're, we're not good behind the chains. We're not, we're, we're struggling when it's first and 10, no less to be first and 15. Really nice job right here by Christian Washington, just catching the ball. He, he was able to evade a couple of tacklers throughout the game. Uh, we tried to get to the screen one more time, I thought, we, I thought this was a very generous spot with an opportunity to get off the field. And then we had to start using our timeouts uh, with about four minutes to go because we still needed two possessions. 
So Miles here at the end of the game in the two minute drill and another pass over the middle coming out of the backfield, Christian Washington, and, and look at his ability breaking tackles and keeping his feet. You know, he almost stayed up right here. His knee barely nicks the ground or else that's gonna be a lot bigger play. So it set it up a fourth and two opportunity. We we're able to convert the first down, but we're running out of time. So we've got to get the ball. I and mean, there's another great run by Christian Washington, who's the first guy hardly ever gets him down. Notice in these uh, two minute sets that it's four wide receivers and one back. Do the Lobos even have an empty backfield formation? Uh, we do, and we've used it a couple times this year, but for protection purposes, to keep him in there to scan, it gives us an opportunity, and then he's able to be the check down guy, which Christian did a great job doing that on Friday, uh, Saturday night. And there was a really nice catch by Elijah Queen, um, and this one on the sideline to Andrew Erickson. You know, we kept getting first downs in these two minute scenarios. We just ran out of time. I mean, we, we weren't able to get the ball in the end zone. This one hurt right here. It took up a lot of time on the, the previous one where we took a sack, ate up about 45 seconds, and then we get sacked on the last play of the game. We've got to be able to protect. We've got to be able to throw, but we can't put ourselves in situations where we're trying to come from behind. That's not what we're built to do. We need to have early success on offense, and then we need to sustain it for the entire game. And you look at those final stats, Coach G, and the two things that jump out, the turnovers and then the number of penalties. You can't have... That made 11 penalties. You can't have nine on offense. And then the, the one out of bounds, I mean, that obviously hurt our football team because it allowed them to score. And there's a difference between aggressive penalties and just ones that you can't do to hurt the football team. And it's not because Justin was trying to hurt the football team. We've just got to be smarter in those situations. Procedural errors, we've got to eliminate this week, those this week during practice. And then give ourselves a chance to be successful with continuing drives. I mean, we had a couple opportunities on third down where we're on a two down territory and then we get a procedural penalty, and now it's third and seven. It's only two down territory if you get a manageable fourth down. So we've got to eliminate that and put the ball in the end zone. Uh, Coach mentioned it earlier. You think 11 penalties, you think over 100 yards of penalty yardage, but it was all a lot of pre-snap stuff, and because the offense struggling, you put them in first and 15 or second and 15, that makes it even tougher. It does, and in the first drive, we handled it. We were able to, we put ourselves behind the chains, did a nice job of executing and getting uh, first downs, until the very end where we had to kick the field goal. And then we've got to continue to be aggressive uh, on both sides of the ball. We did not take the ball away on defense. We did not, uh, we gave up too many big plays and it's a team effort. I mean, defense got to hold them to one less, offense got to score one more. All right, we'll come back after the timeout. We put a ribbon on the Lobos and New Mexico State, and then we look ahead. New Mexico hosting Fresno State at University Stadium. We're back to wrap up this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm your host, Robert Portnoy, with Lobo football coach Danny Gonzalez and Coach G. Not the result you wanted in the Rio Grande rivalry, your first loss to New Mexico State. Um, and definitely, uh, I'm sure it stung in the locker room. How quickly did the guys bounce back? What was it like on Sunday when you brought them into the facility? Oh, I thought they were really, they took it hard, as they should have. I mean, that one should sting even more than all the rest of them. And then... I told them last night, get rid of it by the time you get here on Tuesday morning because it's time to go. And this adds to the rivalry. I mean, obviously, give Coach Kill credit. He had his boys ready to play. They got after us. Uh, we have to wait 365 days or more to, to get them to come back up here. I mean, as much as I talk about my disdain for them and, and all of the, those things, it gives, people, uh, it gives their people a lot of incentive to play the game, and, and now they have bragging rights for a year. It's part of a rivalry. I'm okay with it. I mean – bring it all at me and we can't our expectation is to win that game every single time they got the better end of us well rivalries are better when it's not always hammer and nail and if they're a better program that just generates even more interest no doubt i think they've made a commitment to coach kill which is awesome for our state uh we we want to be better than them they want to be better than us so i think it makes it great for the rivalry okay the lobos in fresno state 4 30 p.m kickoff university stadium Fresno State's season didn't start off the way they wanted, but they've had a tough schedule, and they've been without their starting quarterback, Jake Hayner, and all of a sudden, they beat the hottest team in the conference, San Jose State. They did. They played really well Saturday night, 17-10 uh, victory. Logan Fife has gotten better every single week. I mean, struggled a little bit against Connecticut, got better against Boise, and I thought he played pretty good on Saturday night against uh, San Jose State. So he's gotten better. They have great receivers. I mean, they're, they're very athletic outside. Uh, Jordan Mims is a good running back. And then on the other side of the ball, they're pretty stout up front. I mean, people aren't running all over them. All their games have been low scoring and been close. Uh, Oregon State had a good plan, and that was when they had Jake Hayner. I thought they were moving the ball very well against USC. And then when Hayner got hurt, uh, obviously Logan Five came in and, and there was an adjustment. 
now he's gotten better every week. So we've got a, a really good football team coming into Albuquerque. And they feel like they could still win their division. They only have one conference loss. So they still feel like they have the entire uh, goals that they set at the start of the year out front of them. They absolutely do. And they have a leg up on probably the hottest team on that side. Uh, so they're going to come in with a lot of incentive. I, I truly feel that these next five are going to be just like the last three. Uh, it's going to be competitive games. We've got to continue to get better and not kill ourselves. And if we can do that, we'll have a chance to win. The last uh, three games, we've had opportunities to win in the fourth quarter. New Mexico State got the late touchdown after the penalty. Uh, we throw two pick sixes the pri prior weeks when it's one possession game. We're a competitive football team. We're not a very good football team. We've got to continue to finish off those things so that we can become a better football team. Well, there are a lot of pieces to a football puzzle, but one of the key pieces is the quarterback. You mentioned the last three games. You've used three quarterbacks during that stretch. Is C.J. Montez getting closer to being ready with that hamstring issue? And will you continue to use uh, Justin Holliday as well as your starter, Miles Kendrick? You know, uh, we'll evaluate that all week long, and we'll decide what gives us the best advantage going into the game. Uh, all three of them have done some good things this year. We didn't get Justin in probably as much as we wanted to this last weekend uh, with the procedural stuff and, and giving Heath an opportunity to get one game under his belt. And usually between game one and game two, you see a lot of improvement. I thought he felt more comfortable yesterday when we were going over stuff. So we'll see that improvement and, and we'll go from there. You know, Coach, the way you teach defense and the way you teach tackling and, and running through the ball carriers, you're one of the top uh, fumble forcing teams in the nation. You didn't get any. Um, but did you feel like the defense was still doing its thing the way that it always has well, I, this season? I thought they played hard. We just didn't get it. I mean, we had the ball on the ground. We didn't get an opportunity to get off the field and get it. All right, Coach. Best of luck against Fresno State. Thank you. All right. That's it for us. For Frank McCogliano, Chase Christensen, and Head Coach Danny Gonzalez, I'm Robert Porter. So long, everybody. And go Lobos.